Hello again, Twitch people and or YouTube. It is good to be back. I haven't streamed in so long. I can't, it's been like three weeks or some ridiculous... I don't even know. Um, it's so long that my browser almost forgot my stream manager link. So that's, that's not good. Let's see if my uh, fancy schmancy commands still work. Bang, Josh. They do. Yay. So, hello. If you're just tuning in now, oh boy. Yeah, stream elements logged itself out. Love to see it. I'm Josh, I'm a full-time open source developer. I stream on Twitch once in a while. Uh, I'm Josh, um, I, hmm, two viewers and now zero viewers. Great, people came in, they left. Um, I rely on sponsorship, so please give me money. Big social. I really have come to enjoy these uh, stream elements commands. I need to update my socials uh, because there's blue sky now. Oh, Masvidal is mistyped. Let's fix that. Oh, these aren't alphabetical. That's not good. Let's let's make these a list. If you, anyone in the chat, please, please. Uh, Feel free to ask questions, say hello, just hang out. Always happy to talk while I'm just alphabetizing my social media links. Shout out to Blue Sky for coming first in the alphabet compared to all these. Blue Sky to app slash, what am I in Blue Sky? Slash profile, Joshua K. Goldberg, good stuff. Takanomi, hello. Parasocial. I don't know, is Jen here? Also, hello. Let's see if the bank socials goes on multiple lines. I want to say it doesn't. Oh, is Jen online right now? Shizuzzles. I do hate competing with people I like. Oh, well, if you go over to Jen, I won't be offended at all. <laughs> say hi. Oh, my child. Oh, my God. I forgot that I have to set these things. How do I? No, I'll just, uh, just take that aside. Ooh. Shout out to Twitch for putting this. The circles instead of your actual stream key. Where is my? Where is my? God dang it! I don't even know how to change these. Ugh. Ugh. Eh. This is so frustrating. I hate this. Ugh. I. The, the Twitch this UI is just I randomly I so... The Twitch UI is just... Subpar so Twitch dashboard. Where is subpar so Twitch dashboard? No, when you say dashboard on my stream... When you say dashboard on my stream... Channel? On my stream... Channel? Brand? No. Schedule? No. Feature Brand. content, no. No. stream Schedule. events, no. No. Feature content, no. No. stream events. No. Uh, what is happening? Stream events. Uh, what is happening? Stream manager. Okay. What is happening? Where is the stream freaking? Manager. Okay. Settings. Where is the freaking? Edit title. Okay. Where is title? Edit title. Where is title? Edit stream info. Ah, there we go. Edit stream info. Thank you ah, so much for the help. <laughs> Edit stream info. Thank you so ah, much for the help. What do I what do I normally uh Thank you ah, so much for the help. Let's work on open source deal. That's my uh, uh, title. So yeah, it's been let's work. Wow, it's been since That's May. Been it's almost a month. Yeah. Yeah, it's been let's work. Wow, it's been stream manager at a stream. It's almost a month. Yeah, it's been let's work. There we go. Stream manager at a stream. It's almost a month. Yeah, it's been let's work. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and uh Close all my 15 other Twitch tabs. That's probably mine. Okay, cool. That echo uh, should be fixed now? Question mark. <laughs> Great stuff. Thank you for the help. Um, all right. I don't hear the echo, so we're good to go. Um, I, what I normally do is... Round one. I uh, post all the things I do on, on my socials. So that's Blue Sky, Mastodon. Bastodon and Twitter. So first thing I'm gonna go through is my notifications. Um, this TypeScript BSLint one is kind of chunky, so I'm gonna 
do it another time. But for now, I've got a couple of things in my template TypeScript node package. So let's let's put that on the uh, the bang. Where is it? Bang project. Reviewing PRs on template TypeScript node package. Boop, bang project. All right. So first up is this one from Navin Morphy. Uh, let's post that on the social media. And, uh, put these side by side. Do, do, do. First up, reviewing a PR to improve the CLI for my template TypeScript node package. And Navin, Navin, are you on Twitter? Yes. Yay, Ooh, forgot to follow. All right, Twitter. Someone let me know if I'm missing a uh, social media link for someone, but here we go. Okay, very excited about this. Uh, this contributor has sent a few things so far. So right now, Let's talk about this project. Uh, template TypeScript node package, which I just linked to in the chat, is this nice little template package that sets up a whole bunch of goodness for just your standard CLI or node API. Um, TypeScript, VTest for tests, TypeScript VSLint and ESLint for linting, automated release management, and so on and so forth. Um, it also has a hydration script and a setup script, two scripts. The setup script is something that you run when you first clone the template that like walks you through uh, changing the username on the templates files and the repo name and title and so on. And then hydration can take an existing repo and adapt it to use the template stuff. But for the setup script, um, right now it's it auto detects your uh, repository details using Git by doing git remote dash V, but uh, I only hard coded it to support HTTPS. Like uh, I'm gonna, open up the template package and warp. Here we go. Uh, so let's move the warp way at. So exit zero, whoa, get checkout name, get remote V. All right. So yeah, right now I always just use HTTPS. I'm sure someone's gonna yell at me that I should use SSL or SSH or whatever, that's, that's fine. Uh, but regardless, um, there is a place in code v where, um, here we go. Where is it? Here we go. Shared defaults. Grep only the remote origin and its fetch URL. So in the default settings for the repo, which is the owner and repository, like Josh and Kay Goldberg, template types node package, and so on. Um, oops. Um, it tries to do get remote dash v and grep for origin and grep fetch. But uh, looks like uh, that isn't working under the default settings. So the bug that was filed, 518, we're throwing an error because, where is it? Could not match a fetch remote from git. Aha. So this regular expression is not matching a fetch remote. And then actually posting in the uh, URL, or sorry, in the issue, uh, there is like a package that does this, get remote origin URL, so that's nice. So overall, now I'm guessing this PR is probably pretty good. Here's the PR. And I, um, I had requested changes that there's a test failure. Uh, I previously requested alphabetizing the list of packages that are uninstalled at the end of the setup script. Those packages are just used for setup, so that's that's done. Awesome. So let's take a look. PHPR check out this thing, get pull, builds. Alright, so adding the types for get URL parse. Did I not PMPMI? Some failure. Hopefully we can ignore it. Yay, it builds. All right, so get remote origin URL and get URL parse. Those are added as dependencies. Uninstall packages, adding type to get URL, get remote origin. Okay, that 
looks good. All right, so now we get to the, the juice, the shared defaults. So we try to await git remote origin URL, uh, our old favorite community maintainer, Sendrosaurus, and then also parse the name and owner. Uh, could not populate default owner repo, do not detect a git repo with an origin. Great, 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 great. So yeah, no more fancy schmancy regular expression on the inside. Here now we instead do it using these nice shared packages. That is great. That all looks good. Um, there are no task failures or complaints. Uh, so that's nice. I'm surprised that uh, there were no test updates. Defaults. Defaults is not covered by unit tests. Okay, so that makes that easy. Uh, so what I'm just gonna do real quick is I'm going to um, just try this out because I, I'm always scared to try things, or to merge things without trying them. So I'm gonna use this template, create a new repo, uh, pick G set up testing temp. I'm gonna delete this repo afterwards. Uh, get clone this code, Jackie G's. Get clone this thing. Code, Jackie G, set up testing temp. NPM I, and while this is installing from PNPM, I'm just gonna copy and paste the things. Uh, so instead of the current source, I'll do source instead of uh, packages dependencies and dev dependencies. I'm copying over the new ones. In theory, I could like do some fancy stuff with Git to like check out the correct commit or something, but I think this is for now just easier while it's installing. Uh, get remote. Okay. So now get remotes are HBS. So get remote remove origin. And then if I get remote Dash V, there's nothing. So get add all updated or yeah. So now that there are no get remotes, I'm going to npm run setup. See, just make sure it defaults nicely. Username, Joshua K. Goldberg. Uh, G setup testing temp. If I do this again, I'll write it on the command line instead of typing it up manually. Cool. Failed hydrating repo labels because uh, no, no get remotes found. Huh. You know what I should do? Uh, no get remotes found. I should uh, skip API on that one. So name, we set up testing temp. Title, temp23, description, SDA, SDF, uh, repository, GPG setup, testing, temp. So I'm gonna skip API so it doesn't do API calls like that. Resetting back to the way it was, okay. Could not populate default owner repository. Did I not put the... Uh, I didn't put a dash dash on there, no. Joshua K. Goldberg. Cool, so it doesn't populate the default. Awesome. Seems to work. So now let's try it with a git remote add origin of the SSH equivalent. So if we get remote dash V, we see it's now this like get at URL. So if we run the setup, great. seems like it did not complain about uh, the defaults. So if we look at them, console.log name and owner, it should log my name and repo. Oh wait. Gotta 
Yay. Awesome. So I tried this out locally. Seems to work. Let's merge. I'm also just going to delete this temp repo. Boop, boop, boop. Anyway, uh, if I go too fast for anyone, let me know. Always happy to slow down, explain what I'm doing, just chat. If you have any questions, always happy to answer. Looks great. I tried this. Where's my mustache? Hey, alien. Uh, the mustache was there because my glorious spouse wanted it. And you know what? It was fun, but uh, it's too scratchy. I don't like having a mustache. So sorry to disappoint. Also, hi. How's it going? And with and without a remote. And it works great. Love to see the code simplification and reusing an existing package. Which is true. I really like that this PR uses like existing stuff instead of doing it itself the way I did. Alt, what is the alt on this? Guy and mullet, guy and mullet saying, yes, that is awesome. My travels and talks were honestly great. I had a really good time. Thank you for asking. Um, I was in Athens for CDJS Athens. Also Mariah and I uh, went to Santorini for a week at a time. And then I alone was in Melbourne, Australia for uh, Web Directions Code and they were both just great time, great place to travel. Greek food and hospitality are awesome. Australians are hilarious and their coffee is so freaking good. Oh my God. Also the conferences were a lot of fun. So learned a bunch. Chrissy, welcome. You have arrived. Awesome. And you're just in time for me to move on to the second PR review of the stream. Uh, next up, another PR second of two PRs to the package. How's it going? Great stuff so far. Yay. Whenever someone says I have arrived, it makes me think of this, uh, old TikTok or something about a cat. Oh Lord, he hath arrived. I really worry. Nope, that's that's not, God dang it. <laughs> well, anyway, there's a funny video of someone saying he has arrived for about their very chunky cat. Anyway. Cool, let's look at this friend here. Um, add ESLint plugin and to ESLint configuration. Oh my Lord, what a story. So ESLint plugin node for the longest time, for a pretty long time, was original set of ESLint rules for Node.js. Uh, old, you were doing dramatic entrance, voila. Old is this. Um, this was a great package. Unfortunately, it has been updated since 2021. Uh, I, don't, I don't know what um, Toru is up to, but I know they're a very busy person. And uh, they haven't had time to maintain this. So uh, <laughs> now the community, uh, after asking them uh, if they want help, uh, yeah, has made its own package, ESLint plugin N, and short for node, uh, which is in the ESLint community org, the like set of well maintained community repos. Oops, got to start that. New. So ESM plugin N is a set of ESM rules for Node.js. It's a fork of ESM plugin Node that is actually maintained, for example, released last month. Um, so um, I've been wanting ESM plugin Node or an equivalent for a while on the template TypeScript Node package that I maintain because ESM rules for Node can be quite useful. However, uh, I didn't realize it was ESM plugin N. Embarrassingly, I must have missed that. So, ooh. Um, ooh, a code can be docs PR. Yeah, looks cool. Um, not, it's out of my area. I'll say, uh, I used to work at code Academy, so I do love them, but, uh, code Academy docs is a cool project. Anyway, um, ESM plugin N 
is what I'm going to focus on now because I, uh, <laughs> it takes a while for me to like shift mindset back into the Code Academy docs days. It's a fun project. Um, yeah, so uh, this PR here adds ESM plugin and to the ESM config per an issue where I wanted it. Uh, let's see, files changed. So adding and recommended. Uh, oh, interesting. So they reordered some stuff in the ESM config. Um, and then also had to add an ESM disable next line in the readme. That's interesting. I'm going to uh, pull in a yep, package added along with the other ESM plugins and Oh, it looks like it updated the lock file version. Nope, this is fine. I'll just have to update my PNPM locally to the latest. So yeah, it looks like there's another PNPM update. Hooray. Okay. Uh, cool. Let's clone it locally. Or Check it out. GHPR check out this. Git pull, npm, npmi, dsg, npm at latest. My. What is, why is there a npm unlink prettier plugin curly? Oh, there's a missing bin file in it. I think I saw an issue in GitHub. Ignore that. Anyway, npm lint. So they mentioned uh, that uh, there wasn't a perfectionist ESLint run on .esmrc CJS, so that changes the order of the objects. That's unfortunate. If I go to check out main pull uh, pmpm lint, very weird. I don't know why this would need to run on the ESLint file uh huh this doesn't cause issues on main so what what's happening here why is this one happening so get checkout main isntrc.cjs and then manually add in the uh, extends plugin n slash recommended oh, okay. npi and then run lint is it not getting run on this file in the x is lint this file on main builds or on my local computer. I don't know why this is uh, the case. The comments uh, I don't see any lint complaints and the comments are comments and order are intentional. So although moving the excluded files up is nice, the rules objects MIO shouldn't be fast. Yeah, so I, in the ESN config, the way that I generally organize my list of rules is I'll put a little comment above each section of custom rule settings, like turning things on or off. And I like them in a particular order and I like them grouped. So I wouldn't want an ESM plugin to like alphabetize these or whatever. I want them to stay where they are. Like these strict by default rules don't work well and we like them less strict or whatnot. So I'm gonna request changes on the ESLint. Grr. Uh, no, I'd rather not include these comments here. Uh, it's the, yeah, having a disabled comment in the readme, I don't think is good form. Like it's just, 
it looks weird. Like the readme is the documentation source and it's telling people how to use the thing. So putting an ESLint disable in the readme is, where is it? Line 46, where, where did it go? Where's the readme code block? Here it is. Yeah, so like having this in here. Oh, thanks for the sub, Ellie, and I really appreciate it. Can I shout you out? What's the shout out? Alien codes. Yay! A very cool astro person. How would you describe yourself? Also, what is astro? Oh. Uh, thanks for the sub. Anyway, um, yeah, so the readme is the is how people see the way you're meant to use the package. It'd be weird to could be off-putting and confusing. Yeah, what is Astra? Using Kevin, welcome. Glad you can make it. Better late than never. How's it going? Uh, being confusing and off-putting to suggest folks need to do this. It feels to me like this is this might be an issue to file on ESLint plugin N. Readme equals welcome sign, I like it. Welcome. Uh, that the package itself shouldn't be flagged in Linton. Cool, will do. I know I'm not good at LinkedIn. I very rarely remember to check it. I have to set that up. Uh, what did I change it? No, okay. Uh, or failing that Astro is the future of JS. <laughs> Everything is the future. Or failing that, or failing slash pending that perhaps just a configuration line in the um, ESLint config file. Astro Starlight. I feel like I saw this. What is, what is this again? Oh yeah, this is like, uh, is, is it inaccurate and or condescending to say that it's like Docusaurus for Astro? Congrats on the release, it looks really cool. Love, love the theming as always. Also, use some plugin and no missing import. I'm pretty sure it has a, uh, cool. I wonder if this even makes sense or is important for this repo. Like we have TypeScript to validate that things exist. Oh, I guess it makes sense for JavaScript files. Yeah, uh, it has a config file. Um, so I'd say allow modules. Uh, yeah. Uh, Yes, on the same line and no process exit. So there's like a n slash no process exit. Yes, yes, I'm plugging in. Come on, come on, search. Where is it? T no process exit. All right, so no process exit is used to immediately stop the node process exit. This is dangerous because it can run any method at any point in time, potentially stopping node application completely when error occurs. Yeah, that's, yeah. So generally code shouldn't do this. Um, but yeah, because this like set a, where is this shared get octokit process.exit. Mm. I think, and I think the code is probably right to, uh, the rule probably right to flag here. There's no real reason why we need to explicitly halt the process here. We should be able to throw a normal error or with a nice message.
Cool. So yeah, I actually think the rule was right here that like instead of doing process at exit zero in this get octokit function, which is the thing that retrieves the uh, the GitHub octokit instance, which is what you use to query the GitHub API, we can set like I don't know, grow new error. Honestly, we could probably yeah like could not create a GitHub octokit instance. Uh, fun fact, by the way, the JavaScript error constructor takes a second parameter nowadays. This is a relatively newer thing that you can specify cause in. Really nice. Cool. So now if this throws, then like get octokit will throw and so on and so forth. So that's, that's, that's good. Great start. Thanks. Mostly requesting changes around moving yes, like single next lines. Love to see it. Okay, dokie. Labels waiting. Awesome. <laughs> Decreased coverage by 0.06%. Oh no. Hi. Cool, cool. So, oh yeah, fun fact, I finally got this working in the repo. Uh, GitHub Actions to post a nice little release bot message, included in version blah, 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 whenever a, a thing is released. So that makes me happy. Yay. I, I wanna stay in on this template stuff. Um, and I'm actually very pleased about this prettier plugin curly that I wrote. So. I've had this whole shebang, this advocacy thing recently where I've been screaming and yelling at anyone who will listen that you shouldn't use uh, a, a linter to format. And one of the places I've yelled this in is this GitHub readme project guide. Very excited and proud of this. Uh, where is it? Don't use linters for formatting. So uh, yeah, one of the tricky things with this though is that there are some formatting slash style preferences that are not enforceable uh, by default in say prettier in, in most formatters. For example, whether you use curly braces <laughs> or not, it's like the most random little thing. Like whether you use curly braces, it's around the DEF after this if ABC. Um, prettier explicitly does not enforce that because that would modify the AST or abstract syntax tree, meaning like how the code is represented internally. But this is really a formatting concern, not a linting concern. So I've always hated using the ESLint curly rule for it. As a result, I wrote a prettier plugin where you can add it to your prettier config. And then uh, whenever you format, like let's say like if, random start log i whenever you format so i then save then it'll add the curly brackets you haven't read my readme thing that's okay you've you've definitely heard me say all those things at some point in time <laughs> that 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 guy just restates a bunch of stuff i've been screaming into the void including on this twitch stream so yeah i'm really really pleased about this prettier plugin um there are not that many prettier plugins in the wild most of them are around supporting a new language. Um, some of them like package JSON, like add extra formatting stuff to specific files. Uh, but pretty plug in curly, it, uh, it's just for in JavaScript TypeScript using the curly bracket. Cool, so it's on, uh... yeah, GitHub Readme has been doing a lot of work. Like mine not, mine's pretty new and it's like not even close to the first one anymore. Look at, look at this. I also think the URL is just really cute. Uh, big fan of Faros and Socket over there. Cool beans. Where am I? Oh man, I'm even lower down than I remember being. Where is, where is my little guy? My, my little frog, frog friend. I'm not on the front page anymore. Oh, downside of, uh, oh, hey, Santosh. Where is it? Where did he go? There he is. Nice dude. Um, yeah, anyway, uh, so uh, let's look at this. Um, 
So solve filed an issue. So I'm actually gonna oops, almost forgot to update my project. Reviewing issues and PRs on my prettier plugin. You know, Santosh, that's awesome. How'd you two meet? Dude, Santosh is everywhere. Moving on to my Oh, Sarah with Astro's got to get a free me? Sarah from Astro is a freaking MVP. Oh, is that this thing? Doesn't mention Sarah. Clint. Ah, there it is. Awesome. Congrats, Sarah Rainsberger. What are these like? Do we get a... Boop. Cool. Awesome. So moving on to my new prettier plugin, Curly. So the first thing up is Ray, something useless or useful. Uh, a high school, love seeing people who are like a high school student doing like intense open source work. Oh, nice. Uh, first up, first of these and issue from on parsing, whoa. Oh, I'm in blue sky instead of Twitter. Whoops. Oh, geez. Come on. This guy's text field is weird. On uh, errors in parsing. Definitely don't know what I'm doing with writing prettier plugins. Yeah, I am not confident that the way I set it up is the right way. Uh, Issue six, Docs Empress, Queen. <laughs> Queen is not sufficient. I love that. Uh, uh, just updating the socials. Boop. And do 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 do. do. Okay, so what happens when we try to parse and format? Ah, right, so yeah, there are issues in formatting if you have like legit syntax errors. Uh, so if I warp code prettier plugin curly, oh my God, it's not on this computer. Pip clone prettier plugin curly. I've been doing it on my laptop, LOL. I think am I get this open and then if we go to the test file look at all these cases so so smooth so it's just a bunch of input expected and an optional custom file path so if i do like const a equals one const a equals one kmdm test it should aha here we go so um we should be using prettier's parser uh they say Oh, that is accepting. Looks like my labels didn't get hydrated. That's not good. Accepting PRs and uh, type bug. I have to fix these up later. They, they previously committed. Look at that. Oh yeah, they fixed a docs thing. All right, so maybe fixed by number eight. Where is eight? Accepting loose parser options to parse invalid code. Oh, look at this. Wow, wow, wow. So here's how this pre how this whole shebang works. Um, a prettier plugin exposes um give me my code. Uh <laughs> semantics on what is a queen? Uh, a prettier plugin exposes, a, among other potential things, a parser's object. And that parser's object has a key value map of, given the type of code that needs to be parsed, for example, TypeScript code or code that's JavaScript, so it should be parsed with Babel, um, a set of things you, you can optionally put on it. For example, um, preprocess, which is a function that takes in a string and returns a string. Start TS server. 
so um, that preprocess function is where you can muck around with the code before it actually gets turned into an AST and, and formatted with prettier. So that's what I'm doing. So in my preprocess, I'm myself turning something into a tree and then um, putting it into uh, a, like the parser and formatter. And honestly, the 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 majority of the logic around here is just finding the nodes like in if statements and for in statements that should have curly brackets and adding a curly bracket they need. But um, before I can do that, I actually have to parse the code, which is what this line does. Um, so here we go. If I ghpr check out eight. So now what they're doing is you get parse options. So here we go. So yeah, they've added a whole bunch more things. So they're like all these plugins that you can do in JSTS. Um, also are all these options for like source type module and so on and so forth. So this is great. This is really useful. Um, like I, I'm actually kind of validating here that I was doing the right approach. I was like parsing into Babel and, and uh, yeah, this, this pleases me. Flagadori, hello again. Uh, how's it going? So I'm just reading the chat. I'm interested in this semantics discussion. Mm. Jen is here. Hello. Thanks for rating. Sorry. We were streaming at the same time. <laughs> um, PMPM, I, PMPM test. So for everyone who just joined, hello. Thanks for joining my stream. I'm Josh. Jen might have enjoyed me. I don't know. Say hello, everyone. Happy to have you here. Um, welcome to the to this stream. I'm working on this fun little project, uh, Prettier Plugin Curly, which is a prettier learner. Hello. Glad you can make it. Um, which is a plugin that lets Prettier enforce that you use curly brackets. <laughs> Um, oh yeah, shout out Jen. Yeah, likewise. Cool. So um, we, I'm just gonna finish this up now. Uh, it looks like they got a whole bunch of good stuff here. Awesome, TL. Thanks for help for pitching in. This is great. So I'm just gonna quickly, and then we can move on to the next PR. Yay. Um, Ryan is on the ball, honestly. Oh yeah, hi Graham. It's it's fine either way, but yeah, I prefer Josh. It's just Josh Goldberg is taken when I was setting up my usernames early on. So now it's Joshua K. Goldberg everywhere. Very annoying. <laughs> yeah. All right, so shout out to Saul for picking this thing. So add Saul for a uh, bug for code. So yeah, um, did I already post the link? I did post the link. Here we go. So fun fact for those who haven't seen this before, I use this app called uh, All Contributors, which is this awesome thing that semi-automates um, creating this nice little table at the bottom of your readme of all the people who contributed. Um, I have it in all my repos that are on my template and uh, it makes me happy because I can just say in a little comment on GitHub like, all contributors add and the person and type of thing. Fusion stock code. So I'm gonna just merge this PR. Awesome. Boop. Awesome. And another, so now I'm gonna move to the next issue. Next up, yet another, love to see people active, uh, issue PR uh, contribution from, oops, wrong thing. Oh, thanks, thanks for uh, taking it out. This time on the curly plugin. 
So it looks like um, I had, actually, if anyone has an eagle eye, seen this earlier in the stream. I've seen this that uh, whenever you <laughs> install something that has the prettier plugin curly package, there's a warning that the package couldn't create a bin. So uh, this is because um, yeah, it was a erroneous bin entry. So let me just approve that. Do, do, do. Oops. Deletes because they're not on Blue Sky to my knowledge. Next up. Cannot locate record. What the heck is this? Look at that lovely little uh lovely little error. Yeesh. Let's move on and uh, try that after refreshing. Come on. Fine, does it work? Okay, cool. So uh, yeah, uh, erroneous bin entry. Let me just type bug accepting PRs. Here we go, merge PR. Cool. Um, Fun fact, there is an emoji key on all contributors. Uh, so I want to make sure that I'm giving people credit when they report stuff. So all contributors add nubbin for bug. And then also on issue six, I should also add um, solve for bug because they reported it and they should be given credit. So that's that's fun. Awesome. So that's all on this prettier plugin curly situation for now. Wow, time flies when you're you're streaming. I feel like I feel like it's been so long and I'm quite tired. So yeah, this is this has been fun. Uh, but I do want to actually um, I'm gonna do some more like clerical work now on type, sorry, not clerical, some more deep work now on type two BS then because I have the time. So just, if y'all wanna, wanna buckle down, this is gonna be some good stuff. Let me just merge this PR. All right. So save this one for the end. Let's just ignore these. <laughs> it's all those keyboard shortcuts. Also it helps to not review the pull request. That's the trick to reviewing a lot of PRs. Just don't merge them. And then when you don't review your PRs, you inevitably get a lot more PRs for the bugs you caused by not reviewing them. So, you know, life is good. Deep dive conk. You know, if Twitch supported background music that, that people could watch or like listen to on their own, that would be great. Uh, but here's what I'm gonna do. I, I'm gonna go refresh my water and have a little snack. Um, so I'm gonna run a quick one minute ad break. But in the meantime, I'm going to post the PR and um, docs websites that I'm going to be working on. So spoiler for after the, the break, um, I'm, I've am i been working with uh, the TypeScript PS Link folks and with uh, folks from the TypeScript team on a significant performance improvement and configuration simplifier thing on TypeScript PS Link, which is as awesome as it sounds. I'm so excited about this and it's been a long time coming um, and it's going to be a variable as an experimental option in our next major. So look forward to that in like a minute. So be right back.
Hang on a second. What's going on? I thought I set it to do an ad and uh, my stream manager is saying, did it, did it run the ad? Was that a minute? Also, sorry if you were subscribed and got the ad. Oh, it did an ad. Okay, cool. Thanks. I'm still very Twitch novice. I figured the choice was see a blank screen or see a blank screen and ad and I make money off the ads. Also, Chrissy, fun fact about Codecademy. It's just Codecademy. There's no, uh, there's no A in the middle. For the longest time, that was the Wi-Fi password in the office. Where's the A? Um, yeah, sorry. I'm not in like a docs mindset right now. Uh, <laughs> Ooh, cool. Twitch TV broadcast soundtrack. Oh, interesting. So does this um, stream as part of your stream? Because what I want is like a separate toggleable, like as a listener, I can opt in or out of it. Uh, that would be cool. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll look at this. Thank you. Rights clearing music tool. Love rights clearing. I know there's a lot of not doing that. Is Twitch open source? Ugh, if they were before, I've heard some rumors that they're doing some not so nice stuff. Anyway, let's talk about type two PSL. So I'm going to, this is going to take the rest of the stream. I'm probably going to spend a good amount of time. Let's see, maybe like 30, 40 minutes on this. So deep dive here. So TypeScript ESLint, for those who haven't used it before, is the tooling that enables ESLint and Prettier to support TypeScript. Um, I'm actually going to, thank you for pinning the thing, Brian. I'm going to now pin uh, the V6 docs. We have an upcoming V6 of TypeScript ESLint. That's really close. We've <laughs> successfully closed slash merged um, uh, uh, 100 issues or PRs on this thing. Um, and I know we're really close to enabling, uh, to getting like it out the door. I've been saying weeks, but it, for months. Anyway, V6 is awesome. I'm really excited. The main, the biggest change for type 2 VS on V6 is that um, we're simplifying a lot of the um, configs that users would use. So just posting a link to the blog post here. So right now there are three recommended configs in V5 and earlier, recommended, recommended requiring type checking and strict. But this isn't great as a system because we lump in the stylistic rules in these recommended configs, which I don't love. So like enforcing whether you use array of T versus T array sign, like that type of style, that shouldn't be on and recommended. So like the big banner changed is that uh, we're splitting these into six configs, recommended, strict, and stylistic, each of which also has a type checked option. And then also um, uh, rec strict is like a superset of recommended. So like instead of recommended and recommended requiring type checking, you can enable just recommended type checked, which is just a rename of that, which now also includes the recommended rules. And you can also enable stylistic. So that makes me happy. So I don't know if that makes sense. I'm like still workshopping how to explain this to people. So if that just did not make sense to you in the chat, please, please just say WTF no or something. Like, let me, let me know. Um, you just realized something terrible. Your project isn't enabling one of the configs that you wanted. Ah. Where's my fly down? You hadn't pressed the button. What the, what button? The, the merge button. Anyway, another cool thing that we've added, and this is actually already available, is previously you had to specify a string or array of strings. Oh, to follow me. Well, thanks for the follow. Appreciate it. Uh, <laughs> Um, so like you could say like dot slash gsconfig or dot slash packages slash star slash gsconfig. Now we, uh, this is again, already available in types of PS9. You have project true, which just says for each file, find me the closest gsconfig file. So that's nice. Um, so, uh, that's really good, uh, because it simplifies configs for people. So you don't have to memorize paths. And if you have multiple gsconfigs, they can just resolve it. So that, that's something that makes me happy. Um, in addition, uh, we also did a bunch of breaking changes to rule configs, meaning we've made the rules more strict by default. Um, like a, a, a whole bunch of rules are like deleted or deprecated, or we enabled some options by default. So the, the rules should be a little more strict by default. Um, 
and catch more bugs, which is considered a breaking change because now when you update to the latest version, using the default configs, you'll get more lint complaints. Cool. We also dropped support for like really old versions of like Node and ESLint, so that's fine. Um, anyway, a few, a few more changes. That's all the user facing stuff. We also did a bunch of stuff on the developer side, which I'm really excited about. Um, for starters, we made it easier for custom rules to ask for type information. If you don't write your own ESLint rules, you, you don't have to care about this. But like previously, it was it would take like four lines to ask for the type of, of node because you'd have to, from the services that we provide, get the TypeScript type checker. Then given the ECMAScript node, you'd have to get the corresponding TypeScript node and then ask the TypeScript type checker for the type of that node. That's kind of convoluted. So now we provide APIs that just wrap the TypeScript APIs to directly call functions like get type at location for ES nodes, the JavaScript nodes. Again, if you don't write custom rules with or without types of ESLint and that's all gobbly good, don't worry, you don't have to care about it, but it just makes it easier to write rules. So yay. Um, we did a bunch of changes to the format of the code called the AST, um, simplifying it, removing deprecated properties and so on. Um, we made it so consumers can explicitly opt in or out of um, us throwing an error if you provide us an invalid AST. So like if your code is wrong, like if you do this, you can choose now explicitly whether you want us to throw an error or just give you something invalid. Um, this was a big request from the prettier folks. For testing, gobbledygook. Hey, Croucher, welcome. I love gobbledygook. Honestly, what a, uh, what a great word. I like fun words. This is like my like growing up in New York State and spending time in New York City, uh, I don't know, heritage here, but like, I like saying that I like to mooch off of people. I call someone a schmageggy once in a while. Uh, I, I fetch a lot. I schwitz. Oh, what's, there's one more that I've been using lately. That's been making me smile. Oh. Anyone else, anyone here speak Yiddish or no Yiddish? Anyway, what's my favorite pizzeria? Oh boy, Roberta's Brooklyn. It's not like the dollar slice you're thinking of, uh, but oof, <laughs> great question, by the way. Um, Roberta's Pizza. Oh, did they change their website? There's the menu. Full service. Oh my God, I didn't know they were a chain. Wow. Where's the Where's the menu? God dang it. Look, what is this website? What? I just want the dinner menu. Pizza. Okay, yeah, here we go. Their beasting pizza is an experience. A cornucopia of terms, yes. Uh, it's got soprasada, chili, and honey. Yeah, their website sucks, which is how you know the pizza's great. <laughs> uh, but yeah, they're really fun. And they've got like a good bar, and they hold events, and like do community things, so it's always nice. Uh, Lucala is in Brooklyn, no. Also, I'm getting distracted, sorry. <laughs> but uh, let's see how their website is. Ooh, it's a good looking website. Oh, love those scroll-based animations. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> sorry. Um, yeah, so just quickly, no, 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 thank you for the tangent. This is great. When I'm next in Brooklyn, in Bushwick, I'll check out Lucali. Um, previously, by the way, we exposed a rule tester utility for folks to test their custom rules. Now we, we split it out into a uh, um, its own package. The reason is um, instead of subclassing, so like class X extends Y, the original ESLint rule tester. We just like, we wrote our own one. Shout out to uh, Brett Zacher for all that work. Um, anyway, there's a whole bunch of other stuff. I know New York City, it's like pizza and bagels, right? There's a whole bunch of other stuff uh, in here that we did is breaking changes that have just been pending for a while. Um, like a lot of old backwards compat that's no longer necessary and some type improvements. So yay. Um, really excited about this. A lot, so a couple of things that a lot of developers don't realize when working on like larger, not larger size, but larger area of coverage open source projects like ours, as in were used by both ESM and Prettier, is that tech debt can build up just like in any corporate project, like your company, your full-time job, tech debt builds up. And we need to spend time to fix that, which is why there's just this huge list of like breaking changes. 
because we're restricted from being able to do breaking changes because we have so little control over our consumers. It's not like at a company where, you know, you have partner teams and you can talk with the partner teams to coordinate breaking changes. For us, it's just people rely on this stuff. And if we communicate it out, people may or may not listen and may or may not scream at us about breaking changes. So um, we've had to do all these changes over time. But the reason why we chose to do so many of these is that they helped simplify the code base and unlock new features for us that I'm personally very excited about. Um, for example, um, a lot of the simplification around using TypeScript projects true on your parser options has enabled me to work on this use project service feature. Um, so now, now we're actually getting to the stuff that I'm really excited about and want to cover the types of project service. So, um, I'm going to pause and then I'm going to start anew. By the way, don't forget, drink water. My pro tip, have a jug of water with some cute pattern on it by your side. So you always remember. Okay. So right now the APIs we use to type check code are not made for the type of performance we need. The type of performance and configuration, honestly, that we want is basically what VS code gives, where if you open any arbitrary file, it'll figure out the closest coffee does have water in it. Fun fact, it'll figure out the closest file to uh, what you're working on. And like, if you make a new file, like asdf.ts, uh, const wat equals true, um, then it, it can provide type information for you quickly. And if you like update files, we name them, whatever, it'll figure it out. So we're on the inside. We do a lot of manual work around massaging TypeScript projects, which is how TypeScript represents like your cluster of code. Um, but there is a separate set of APIs that TypeScript exposes to editors, such as VS code. That is the TS server library, referring to a language server, something that the editor can tell about updates and then ask about type information and stuff back. So uh, we've wanted for a while to use the APIs in general from TypeScript that are more suited for our use case. Um, ooh, open source on Twitter. Um, and so now we have this, we've, we've been working more with an awesome person from the TypeScript team, Jake Bailey, one of my favorites. Um, ooh. So Jake has been helping us with participation from some other TST members around um, using, ooh, excuse me, using TypeScript APIs. And this TS server project service is like what they're recommending we use. So I'm not gonna go over exhaustively the description here, just high level, a project service does a lot of the work around massaging TypeScript projects that we are currently doing ourselves, uh, which would mean that instead of us doing a suboptimal ad hoc implementation of the TypeScript projects management, we can use this bundled service that does it for us and does it better than we could do as a result. Um, get pull upstream main, get push. Uh, so what I have here, 6754, yeah, uh, is a pull request that I've gone over with a couple people, like Jake from TypeScript and Brad from us. Um, a couple times where I add this new option, experimental in all caps, use project service. So instead of using parser options dot project, which is how you normally configure types of PSLint for types, you use experimental use project service. So what that does is instead of, um, where is it? Yeah, instead of using your normal project stuff, um, you, where is it? Ah, create, I don't even know where the other stuff is called. Anyway, um, so in the create parse settings, which is the list of settings that you use using to parse stuff, we now create project service, which lazily imports uh, the TypeScript server library and then calls a bunch of things. Um, so a TS server server project service is an object that can then do things like project service dot get, uh, get default project for file, which takes in a file name and returns a project undefined. So 
instead of us having to create projects ourselves, it's just we ask the service, hey, can you give me a project? Cool. Um, and then there are like a bunch of massages I have to do as results to make sure that like if things still work with or without this option. So we did some performance comparisons and holy crap, 52% faster. 52% faster. I'm just going to post the perf comparison link. Why is the little hyperlink friends not showing? So like significant performance improvements. Where's the ID? What? There's no ID to heading? Well, I'll just post this link menu. Performance comparison. So 52% faster just... Um, uh, against the baseline. <laughs> Croucher, I can tell you're a dev. I can tell you've got experience working on projects. Your first reaction, second is wow, second is downsides. Um, yeah, so apparently it's not always faster. We don't know why, but it got 11% slower when we linted this one thing. Um, so like we, when we just linted a bunch of files all in the same project, it got slower. We don't know why, we, we want to do some experimentation uh, to figure that out, but that's like a follow-up. Um, yeah, when something, honestly, this whole time I was running it, I was thinking, there's no way this is right. There's no way this is right. <laughs> um, yeah, in a different scenario, it's like 70% faster or, or 63% faster also within the same project. Yeah, we've, we've exhaustively looked at this, trying to figure out where that something's, that seems too good to be true is actually wrong is coming from and we can't find it. So that may be, makes me a little happier, but we're not fallible, you know? Another downside is uh, if you look at the import path in uh, the create project service file, it's TypeScript slash lib slash TS server library. So if you look at, uh, if you look at, uh, the TypeScript node module. I'm just gonna open it in code, whatever. Um, and then you go to lib ts server library dot js. This file is huge. Uh, eighteen thousand, no, one hundred eighty-two thousand lines, because it has a copy of TypeScript embedded inside of it. So like check function expression, for example, like it has the full type checker inside of it. Uh, as does lib slash typescripts.js, which is what we normally import from. So, which is only 169,000 lines. Function check, uh, function expression. So like there are a lot of duplicate lines, a lot of duplicate lines between these two files. So when that's what we're thinking likely might be causing the slowdown, at least part of this is that, um, is that you're now importing slightly more than a second copy of TypeScript. And we're doing it lazily. Like we only require it if you call create project service so that people who don't enable this option suffer. Hmm. But that's not good. Now this is arguably an error issue, whatever on TypeScript's part, which is something that they've been actively working on separately from and prior to this change that their output isn't completely ESM. Like it's not ExpressScript modules fully, like there's duplicate. So they're, they're aware of this. Like they, they've been working at this. They know it's an issue. Um, we even talked about it and there's like good discussions in this, um, in this PR about it. Oh shoot. I forgot to, uh, I forgot to mention last thing today, going, uh, re going over and updating for code review on an exciting perf update to TypeScript. This looks experimental option that could improve linting speeds by 50% in many cases. Yeah, really hard to understate how excited I am. This is like part of why I went to do it, like a big part of why I went to open source full time. Um, yeah, so um, they're talking about like trying to deduplicate so that like one file imports from the other. Um, they're also like, we were concerned, like, are there two option, sorry, two objects that refer to the same thing? Like, is there going to be a bug from like not being referentially equal? But interestingly, the enums are 
coincidentally all the same values because they're the same enums. Um, and most type checking APIs are accessed as members of an object like the type checker. So it's hard to use the wrong one. Um, it, it's worked in theory, but it's very scary that it's a huge additional import and it's two identical things. So um, they're talking about uh, maybe pushing project service into TypeScript JS, which would increase its size by like 10%. We saw it was 169,000 to 180,000 lines. Um, that might be bad. Um, maybe you could move some of the things into like deduplicate, like have TS server library import from TypeScript JS. This is a thing on their side that will get better over time external to us. Cool, so Jake Bailey reviewed some things and then eight hours ago, Brad, one of my fellow maintainers, is uh, uh, has given it the stamp of approval, but there are a bunch of changes to make. So let's go over them now. Boop, 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 slash files. So, um, Let's see, consistent type imports. So why did I do this? I made a, um, I made a version of these tests that uses with meta parser options. I don't remember why I did this. This project service only supports TS and figs with names like TS and JSON. So in testing these rules, we explicitly indicate not to use it despite this. Got it, okay. So uh, yeah, as a potential, actually another downside is, um, you know what, I'm gonna pin the, uh, I'm gonna pin the, there we go. Um, a potential downside also is that it doesn't currently support names like tsconfig.eslint.json. Um, something to figure out later. Maybe there's a TypeScript API we can hook into or something. But um, I don't follow what Brad means. We should probably change this to be in separate subfolders instead. Oh, so instead of tsconfig dash with meta, we would instead want fixtures uh, with meta slash tsconfig. I think that's what he's saying. Uh, path.join with fixtures with dir with meta and for path from path. Okay. So panel bottom. CD packages, ESLint by yarn build. CD packages, ESLint plugin, yarn just consistent type imports. I'll just see, are there any places that also use with meta? Oh boy. All right, so uh, <laughs> we got failures. So I'm trying to, um, I'm trying to change this to work um, with meta parser option and let's only run this file. Should have had no errors, but had an error. All imports are only those types, use import types, whereas so the problem is the test, we're trying to verify that this does not cause any lint errors with the consistent type imports rule when compiler options dot emit decorator metadata is true. Um, but it looks like it's not picking up the, the proper TS config. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find does this thing not some type imports? Does this not reuse type checking? What's going on here? So on an import declaration, I'm just looking for like type at or get type or services. What? 
how is this till dot where is this asking I want to figure out what type your project is being used for this uh, file but I can't find anywhere in the file that actually refers to getting a TypeScript project. So did I like change the with meta parser options in some bad way or something? Huh. Weird. Anyway, create project service. Uh, another hack I can do is um, I can Let's see, view program from project service in the code that uses a program. Uh, I can the console.log asking for projects and for project service for parse settings dot file path and so log opened file opens dot config file name. Okay. And we run. Do we log? We never log. If I undo all changes to this file, does it still complain? Who is this config? I'll keep the old file there. This is not good streaming, I know. I'm very confused. Why is it? Why does it need this? Huh. All imports in the declaration are only used as types. That's from the type over value complaint. Yes. Which is reported source imports. What is source imports? Source imports map. Where does this come from? Okay. So source imports map. Uh, Oh, so it's a, so we're not actually really asking for type information. We're asking for like uh, data on the node itself. That's kind of cool. Source imports. Oh, wait. I'm gonna Ah, let's look at the source. So now the source is up, 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 up. Do we not log sources through? Okay. So we're looking at the node. You know, I'm going to debug so I can step through. All right. So the node import kind. So in the, the bad case, we see that it's, uh, it's in this last one where we don't have a value import and the specifiers are an import default. So we do value import. And let's see. Aha, context.get declared variables. That's that's where we're that's where we're figuring out where the variables are created. Okay. All right. So that's in the scope manager. Okay. So what's happening is there's this whole other package called the scope manager in TypeScript BS Lint. Uh, the scope manager, it's actually documented on line scope manager. Here we go. Um, which builds up an understanding of which variables are available where. Like if you say let foo, then uh, it knows that there's a variable named foo. And if you say let foo inside a function, it knows the foo is inside the function, not elsewhere. So we're asking the scope manager for information uh, which is why we're not asking for type information. We're just asking for uh, the scopes. And T 
PS config with meta.json. So it looks like emit decorator metadata helps inform the scope manager, but TS config with meta. Uh, path a join get fixtures router with meta. Oh, you know what? I forgot. I needed to change the extends to dot dot slash extends. Let's see if that fixes anything. And it's still logging. Don't need that. Ah, still complaining. Scope manager TS. Constructor. What are the options for the scope manager? Global return, source type, implied strict. Scope manager never actually refers to the project. So, oh, I don't know why this is breaking and I'm too tired to find out. So I'm going to, I'm going to skip this. Try taking a, actually, you know what, before I skip this, let me just do my due diligence. Uh, let me just take one more look with meta options. What is this TS config router that's getting logged? Hi, with meta parser options. Dot TS config router. Fixtures with meta, which does have a, uh, Oh, I wanted to turn off use project, whatever. And still complaining. Okay, so we know that we're logging the correct path to have a TS config, which does in fact extend a TS config. That's nice. So, uh, meta parser options. Uh, Why is this? Yeah, I'm confused. I don't know why this is breaking. Uh, Brad approved, so I can't figure out how to get this to pass without these changes. Maybe a good follow-up, unless you see a way when I uh, move the test TS config, test fixture TS config to uh, path that join get fixtures router uh, with meta and update its extends the my remove. Oh, you know what? Project. I didn't update the project thing. Maybe that's the problem. This is very convoluted. I do not like this. Right, project with meta, import default path, fix all auto fix flow with meta. Meta, TS config. All right. Please work. Aha, even better. So it can't find the TS config because uh, it can't, it doesn't include the file. That's great. So we should include the file. Oh, so close. <laughs> All right, I'm just like, grasping at straws here. But my guess is that uh, I'll fix it by Swanzo and Nico. Thanks for uh, thanks for subscribing. Yeah, 11 months. That's almost a year. All right, so my guess is that so my inference is that it's not um, it's not including the file. So if I, uh, I should be able to, in some way, like get it to include the file. Um, 
was configured to run. So, so the described file, so the problem is it doesn't find file.ts even though I've specified it's in the include, which is annoying. Uh, so if I just log parse settings, let's see what we get. I might have to rebuild uh, the typeu PS3 package. Yes, I do, how annoying. Um, I'm just gonna set that to watch mode actually. Okay, uh, please rebuild. Okay, so the file path that we're running on is fixtures with meta slash file ts, and then ts config root dirt is fixtures with meta. So why isn't it including it? Maybe it needs with meta slash? In front, please work. <gasps> it works! Yay! If I rerun, oh god dang it, it didn't work. So still complaining about file ts using parse. Oh my god, this is so convoluted. I hate this. Well, you know what? I'm gonna uh, noting. I almost have this working locally, I think. Just finding issues with uh, project program not finding the file after I update the root here. So yeah, I'm just gonna move on because for the sake of the stream, I don't wanna keep working on this. But anyway, Nico, you might be very excited about some of the, the performance improvements with this PR. Very, very good stuff. Moving on. All right. Uh, So in lib parser, the tests, let's see. Ooh, fun fact, path.join just does a string concatenation of the two things. But if we do, according to Brad, uh, if we do a, or is it done build? If we do a path.resolve, it will resolve the dot dot ahead of time. So it should, uh, should be a little nicer. So it'll, oh, it'll like intelligently join. Performance is good. So if I go to the parser, yarn test, parser still passes, awesome. Okay, cool. I'm just gonna open that in. Path equals require path. So if we do like path.join a, B, it does B, oh, dot slash A, dot slash star star slash B. What is the difference between resolve and join? Oh, resolve like adds in the prefix path. Okay. Cool. All right. Um, JL, why did these change? Oh boy. Uh, these changed. So we have, this is another thing that's actually, um, relatively new to TypeScript BS Lint. We have this concept of a type or value specifier. Uh, let's see if I have it in my history. Discussions, uh, unified type or value. Aha, here we go. So this common way in JSON or POJO, plain old JavaScript object, to describe a type or value as a rule option. So like from package name, enter test, source, no test, that type of thing. So a standardized way to specify stuff in a rule options. And that's this, what we call a type or value specifier. And in the tests for it, um, I change from test fixtures file to uh, just file TS. Um, and the reason why I updated was for um, the tests now um, are based on test fixtures as the CWD. So um, instead of dot, so this updates, the path is relative to this, the current working directory. Cool, we 
we don't have to focus on that because I want to leave soon. Oh well. Next comment from Brad. Ooh. Um, create project service. Oh yeah. So because this is a relatively new TypeScript API we're using, uh, not a lot of folks have used it already. There are very few use cases for uh, like needing the same API as the TypeScript language service. So uh, there are some like minor issues we had, very minor with TypeScript because we're such a new user. Um, for example, the types say that typings installer must be defined. It's this object for installing like type definitions. That is not true. It does not have to be uh, defined. So uh, they actually in TypeScript DS or TypeScript V5.1 released uh, just declaring it as optional. So that was really nice. Uh, nice of them to update for us. Really appreciate it. And just in general, not, not specifically for us. Um, there was also a runtime change that needed where, uh, yeah, it had to default to something. Okay, so um, in TypeScript 5.1, that'll work. Uh, we don't actually, we don't actually use TypeScript 5.1 internally. Create once 5.1. Uh, the reason why we don't have TypeScript 5.1 internally in our source code is because there's actually an out of memory error that got introduced in TypeScript 5.1. Um, another collaboration with uh, Jake Bailey from TypeScript. Yeah, I would love to get to, <laughs> get to use it, but they had a couple of, because they did so many um, performance shenanigans, I think they uh, ended up having a couple of like memory regressions, such as life. Um, so once TypeScript 5.14 is released, hopefully with this uh, this issue that Anders is looking at. Um, oh wait, actually, wait a second. Uh, it's not that issue, it's correction. It's this one. So those are the two, wait, wait, hang on. There were two TypeScript issues. Uh, where is the other one? Okay, I guess it's this one. Five, four, five, four, two. Yeah, so a couple memory issues. That's the one that we think is blocking us. So once, uh, great, once, once this is in, we can change. Who thought coding was this hard? <laughs> uh, yeah. Fortunately, I do want to note, um, you can still lint type your 5.1 code with type your BS lint. You just get this angry console warning saying it might not be a supported version unless you disable it in your uh, BS lint config. Like you can disable the warning because we All right. Probably good to wire this up to our debug output. What you talking about? Uh, 43. Um, so part of the project service is using a logger. So um, what actually happens if you do uh, So yeah, there's some APIs that I like kind of stubbed out. Like you can pass in a logger to the project service. Um, Uh, oh, I have to build. Is it really valid? I mean, how often do they change their APIs really? Yeah, the warning's actually, you never know. Um, most of the time the warning is not relevant. I don't, I can't remember the last time I've seen an issue. Just for reference, I'm gonna find the, in our docs while this is building, uh, the complaints, where is it? Uh, Parser. There we go. Here we go. Um, I know it's caused issues in the past. Um, I think it's really more of like a major version thing for breaking changes. But yeah, sometimes they have like accidental breakages. I don't know. If you want to file an issue suggesting that we remove it, um, I'm sure Brad can provide 
for in historical context. I, I don't know myself much. Good question, though. Um, also, I just realized, as like a nice little like docs issue, it would be nice if the docs page actually said what the warning was. It would probably be good for SEO. So I'm going to file this as a uh, docs request. Explicitly say what the TS version warning error is in parser docs. Right now, the docs on warn on unsupported TypeScript. Well, Semver is a lie that we tell ourselves, right? Like in theory, every single release of every single package and project is a major release because you never know. Obligatory XKCD, XKCD space bar heating. For those who haven't seen it, this is so much more real than one would want it to be. Uh, but yeah, they do. They do a major release every minor release. LOL. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, don't actually show the complaints. I don't even know if I have the complaint in any of my repos. Let me uh, let me try to get it locally. Get check out. Mm. Neurotrace. Ha! Huh. First first uh, chat. Welcome to the welcome to the channel. <laughs> Does it, if I remember right, React Native versions are like a whole bunch of zero dots they're on, yeah they're, they're on zero dots so technically technically fun fact not everyone knows that uh on the um semver spec anything that's zero dot you can just break changes whatever you want like it's a zero dot who cares uh and that's why we have native is a zero dot perhaps i don't actually no i haven't looked into why but yeah <laughs> everything's a major uh but okay so yeah i want I want, uh, let's see, package JSON TypeScript 513. So we do Here we go. Uh, so yeah, this is the warning you get. Uh, there you go. It'd probably be good for SEO general docs clarity to include it in the in the section. So accepting PRs to add a mention of this error message in the docs. I think this would be a good first issue. Uh, link to the page. Yeah. Good. <laughs> yeah. Daniel Wilson was also the well, a lot of them have great sense of humor. Daniel in particular, I feel like puts his sense of humor in the release notes a lot, which makes me really happy. I really like the team's outgoing messaging. Good team. Good team TypeScript. Cool. So if anyone wants to tackle this, 7,100. Uh, yay. Uh, mostly through, through the PR in the... Actually, I don't know if I mostly through. In the meantime, a little docs issue. Dang it, I have to copy and paste this. The potential for type grip puns is, is always high when it comes to these things. Okay, um, makes sense. So yeah, anyway, I got totally sidetracked from this, but yeah, there's a stuff you can do with the logger. Um, I just, rebuilt everything. I'm seeing if, uh, am I even, is this stuff even running the project service? No floating promises. <sighs> so I want to see like, does anything actually get logged when we run the logger? Experimental use project service, true. Yeah, and just no floating promises. So I'm, build. so I'm run I'm building the type UPS tree package, which contains this project service logic. And aha. Uh -huh. Yes, we do get called with a whole bunch of stuff. Wow, 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 wow. 
this point, I'll leave that as a follow-up issue. Would be good to have, uh, would be, so this is like a cool trick that I picked up in open source maintenance. If there's something that's not necessary and uh, is possible for someone other than you, like a less experienced in the area slash contextualized up person to do, leave it for someone else to do. Be a good father for getting someone else involved in this area. Someone other than this area of code. Like you don't want to tackle all the things yourself. Like it's, ah, well, thanks for hanging out, Ryan. Hope you, hope you had a good time and hope you're having a nice week. Um, like just, you want to leave things to let other people get involved. It's always good. All right. Cool. So now that I know that it does log things, let's undo changes and continue the review. Did I make it? I've only done one thing so far. Used uh, path.resolve instead of path.join. Cool. Next up in create parse settings, which is the function that shared function that creates like the consolidated, this is how I'm going to parse description object 24. So it'd be nice to re-export the return type. Yeah. So uh, create project service. Yeah. Export type TypeScript project. TypeScript project service equals okay. Actually, you know what? I did a bad. I should have just extracted this to a type alias. Look at that. TypeScript project service. Very fancy. Very fancy. Nice. Right. Cool beans. Also, why did I const thing equals and then return thing? I can just return new. There's an ESLint rule somewhere for that. Right. Um, fix all auto fixable. There we go. Yeah, so we export the return type rather than using the return type helper. There we go. That, that just looks nicer. Resolved. Bread. But yeah, fun fact, you can do return type. It's this built-in helper in TypeScript that given the type of a function, such as type of my function returns, or gets back the type that is the function's return. Cool beans. All right. So the logic for, uh, yeah, so the uh, logic around whether you use a project service or source of project reference redirect or whatever. This is all getting kind of convoluted. Yeah, agreed. This is a lot. I think, I think it would be good to have some kind of discriminated union for the area of project settings too. Good to go even further, and that way you, that way we won't be, that way we can be more clear on, e.g., not allowing project fifty.json with use project service until unless that becomes supported in TypeScript APIs. Good follow up to investigate. Yeah, this is, because this is an experimental option, I'm very comfortable saying, let's do this as a follow-up. Uh, if this were like something we're releasing stable, then definitely not so much a follow-up. Right. Oh boy, so I've only got a uh, couple more, couple more things to go through. So, uh, and I'm gonna finish soon. So any last last uh, questions or comments from folks, please let me know. Always happy to, to talk. Uh, but yeah, last few things. Um, so when we, oh boy, this will leak out into the public types actually. So if I look at, Packages, TypeScript, ES tree, live parse settings, index.js. 
open open TypeScript ES trees folder in Explorer. Maybe Explorer. Okay. Uh, so if we look at the built of oh, dist uh, index DTS. Yeah, Chrissy, I'll let's pair on the doc reviews out outside of this. Um, I'm definitely going to do them with you. I just want to want to help you out with the, the files first. Um, yeah, this this thing is like my excitement today. So index has export create program from config file as create program. Uh, and use provided programs. I'm confused by what Brad is asking for here. Um, so parse settings. Let's get this. Oh, I always get annoyed that this little uh, this friend like can be overlapping code. I don't want it to overlap code, but it can. There used to be a way to get this little find thing out. Uh, parse settings is not here. Um, okay, so create program, which, oi. Which I want to do, not the, uh, not the source version, but the disk DTS file. So this has declare function, blah, 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 returns parse settings. So, okay, so this thing takes in parse settings. So use provided programs can take in parse settings. And the reason why is it uses parse settings dots uh, file path and tsconfig root there. So Brad is suggesting that we um, have, we refactor this into two files. So we have like create program from config file. Um, hmm. Cause we don't, so we don't want parse settings to be something that's exported to users. And we're saying that um, create program from config file. Got it. So create program from config file is something we export to users and we don't want it to, um... wait a second, use provided program. Oh, right. So it's use provided programs is the issue because we export this to users and we don't want, um, we don't want users to see parse settings. And this has basically all, always been provided to users. Um, I think a real quick option before I like go out and like we've had a bunch of stuff would be to like provided programs settings, which so instead of parse settings, we can just use, oh, but then AST from program needs parse settings dot uh, file path. <laughs> AST from program settings. Can I just do file path string? Does that work? Okay. So file path. All right, so this this simplifies get AST programs types to only require just like the one object, oh, which really only needs actually the one thing. So we can just say file path string. Nick Taylor, Nikki T, how's it going? Sorry, you caught me at the very end here, but uh, excited to see you. Um, So now if we say file path string, I'm just uh, reviewing or receiving review, going over requested changes on a uh, really exciting pull request of mine to the next major version, TypeScript ES Lanzel. It's pinned in the chat, but just for reference, boop. 
um, some really exciting uh, perf improvements on this one. Uh, just right now, we got to do some touch-ups. For example, Brad Sacker reviewed and suggested that um, we're leaking types. So I'm just uh, thank you. I'm glad you're doing well. Yeah, this is a cool PR. I think it's really fun. Um, as a quicker, less changey step, I just re uh, changed the parameters for these functions to be their own types or just a string. And parse settings. This needs to take in dot file path. Yarn build, yarn test view. So just some changes for now. Um, path used, path that resolved, and then parse off. Simplify parse settings usage. All right. So for now, just sync those changes. Got a little bit more to go. Uh, <laughs> what's what's happening here? What did I what did I put this in? Parser TS line eighty six. Oh yeah, so I still had to reference. In our next major version, V7, we'll delete this create default program option, which is something no one should ever use. Um, and uh, Brad is in agreement with us killing it. Okay, cool. One last comment and yeah. So <laughs> fun fact, the TypeScript project, like not the way they recommend people write TypeScript, but the way that TypeScript itself is written in TypeScript, the language. Uh, the way that they do things is they'll if they ever have a boolean or undefined the parameter they will put a comment in front of it uh so like insert synchronize true uh we personally normally will use options objects but they their style is to use booleans they're pros and cons either way so yeah um lol yeah, i don't think that's an actionable change so cool. So this pull request is basically ready to, to go. Um, Brad reviewed it. Uh, we have some pending changes. Um, I'll re-request his review. Um, re-requesting review from Brad uh, uh, because I applied a couple of small touch-ups and answer a question. But otherwise, I feel comfortable merging this after we get v6 out the door, just to be safe and not conflict with the v6 release. Whoop, whoop. Very exciting stuff. So yeah, that's my stream for the day. I'm tired and I'm done. I'm gonna, ugh, gonna have to rest my back. I always screw up my right shoulder from the way I hold my mouse during these. I always forget to do right by my body. Anyway, this was fun. Thanks y'all for joining. I'm really excited about this PR. Um, long time coming, really good performance improvements. Also should be a lot easier to configure TypeScript via Slint as a result. So yay. Last thing to do is figure out who to raid. So uh, just from the people I follow, if anyone has any suggestions, I can go with them too. But uh, Chris is getting started. Uh, I, I always like to go with whoever has the least in the raid channel suggestions. So uh, Chris is starting soon. Very good timing. Oh yeah, thanks. Uh, appreciate the vote for me for GitHub Stars mention. But uh, yeah, this has been a lot of fun and y'all can always ask me any questions you want or chat about TypeScripty things and open source. Bye.